This day is not only marks an important day in the calendar of the international community in coming together to reflect on the global strides that have been made in ending FGM, but also to demonstrate our solidarity with the survivors of FGM. We all know the long life consequences of FGM that the survivors have gone through, but their own experiences are uh, incomparable. This is because on a daily basis, they carry and bear the brand of injustice of female genital mutilation. I therefore take this opportunity to strongly condemn the incident which happened here in Ntimaru and featured by the citizen television on January 28th of 2023 of a young girl who was forced into FGM by her brother and other relatives. I condemn. I wish to, I wish the innocent girl a quick recovery and call upon the concerned authorities to ensure the girl gets justice. I moreover, from the report which was presented to my office, it is quite disturbing that during the December and January holidays, a number of girls were cut and over 1,000 girls escaped from their homes seeking self for safety in various rescue centers across Korea. This should be a going concern for this community and all the stakeholders to ensure that we safeguard the rights of our girls. Unless we rise to the occasion and be counted as people who stood up against all forms of harmful practices, then the future generation will judge us very harshly. Indeed, in consideration to the deep-rooted nature of FGM among practicing communities, we need to take deliberate and bold step, steps by involving men and boys in this discussion. I therefore fully identify myself with the 2023 theme, which is partnering with men and boys to transform social norms on gender to end female genital mutilation. Cognizant of the position of men in the African setting, the voice of men and boys is paramount. They hold majority of decision-making position and wield overwhelming power at the household and community level. They are the gatekeepers of the community culture and their involvement will definitely transform social and gender norms that's ending FGM. We need to bring men and boys on board as change agents into constructive power with other community members to improve, to improve the conditions of women's lives. Engaging men also creates space to confront patriarchy, the root cause of gender inequalities and negative masculinities that promote behavior change and promote positive masculinities. Targeting male children and youth is critical to build a future generation that will not subscribe to male dominance but will promote partnership and mutual coexistence of men and women. Ladies and gentlemen, this approach will make FGM a societal problem, but not just a women's issue. Creating an opportunity to engage men and boys will address the behaviors that lead to violence, thus transforming men and boys into responsible fathers, uncles, husbands and brothers. I therefore want to congratulate 
the anti-FGM board for being proactive and ahead of this year's theme by developing guidelines on engaging men and boys in ending female genital mutilation in Kenya. This strategic document that was supported by UNICEF will provide a, a framework to individuals, civil societies, communities, partners, and government in addressing the gaps that has existed in the technical know-how of engaging men and boys in ending FGM. I therefore recognize the willingness of elders from Kuria in Migori County, Pokot in West Pokot County, Samburu in Samburu County, Masai in Narok and Kajiado and Sabaot in Bungoma counties for leading the way in this journey. Female genital mutilation is rooted in gender inequalities and power imbalances that limit opportunities for girls and women to realize their rights and full potential. The practice also violates their rights to health, their rights to security and physical integrity, their rights to be free from torture and cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment. Ending female genital mutilation needs a very strong political commitment and sound leadership. It has to be the first priority on the wish list of any responsible and committed government that subscribes to the rule of law. It is on this basis that the Kenya Kwanzaa government, under the able leadership of our president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, has prioritized the elimination of FGM in Kenya in its plan. Under the Women Agenda Points, four of the nine points reads, and I quote, increased funding for the anti-female genital mutilation board and fully implement the anti-FGM law. End of quote. To reinforce point four under the women agenda, His Excellency the President of on 5th December 2022 during the launch of the State of Judiciary Report in Nairobi, he said, and I quote, FGM should not be a conversation we are having in Kenya in the 21st century. We must go out of our way, and I assure you of my administration's support in ensuring that we eliminate FGM in our country because it is not only against the law, it is endangering the health of girls. End of course. Ladies and gentlemen, globally, an estimated 200 million women and girls alive today have been subjected to this harmful practice. And every year, almost 4 million girls are at risk. In Kenya, they just released preliminary indicators for the Kenya Demographic and Health Survey 2022 indicates that the prevalence of FGM reduced from 21% in 2014 to 15% by 2022. It's a good progress. I therefore want to congratulate all the stakeholders who are implementing anti-FGM interventions for the tremendous progress that the country has realized in ending FGM. However, the 15% prevalence is still unacceptable. Our desire is to realize zero tolerance. That is why we are here today commemorating the International Day of Zero Tolerance for Women Genital Mutilation. Even one girl being cut should be a huge statistic to us. Therefore, to promote the abandonment of FGM, coordinated and systematic efforts are needed.
We need to engage all communities and focus on human rights and gender equality. Our strategies should be more innovative, emphasize on societal dialogue and the empowerment of communities to act collectively to end the practice. We must also address the sexual and reproductive health needs of women and girls who suffer from its consequences. Our strategies must be resilient enough to cope up with humanitarian crises such as climate change and COVID-19 pandemic that disrupted the patterns of the school calendar that's exposing school-going girls to FGM and generally increased cases of GBV in Kenya. Further, it is disturbing to learn that according to Kenya Demographic Health Survey 2022, the knowledge about FGM among the Kenyan population is over 90% for both men and women in all the counties. But then, why is FGM still being practiced? This is a manifestation of defiance and an indication that communities will continue to perpetuate FGM, not because of ignorance of its consequences, but because of sustaining social norms in total disregard of the law. It is therefore incumbent upon all the duty bearers to fully implement the law as one of the deterrent strategies that will hasten the abandonment of FGM. As I conclude, I want to thank everybody, including the county government of Migori, led by our, gov our able governor, Dr. Achilo Ayako, the, the county anti-FGM steering committee, national government officers and anti-FGM champions, and the people of Migori for making this day a success. Special recognition also goes to our partners who have always been very supportive towards implementation of anti-FGM intervention. Finally, the Kenya Kwanza government believes in the rule of law and will, and will fully implement all the nine points of women agenda as stipulated in the plan. I therefore call upon all players for increased concerted and global actions to end female genital mutilation. Let us fully uphold the human rights of all women and girls because women's rights are human rights. The summons of our time dictates that we have to rise above communal social norms that undermine the empowerment of women and girls to the global stage that provides social, economic, technology, and political competitiveness and opportunities for all. Let us all aspire to inspire a world free from female genital mutilation. Asante misana pamoja tu komeshe ukeketaji. Nyerewe nishkwe nafasi hii. Nimashkuru sana hase sana gavana wa Migori, pamoja na county government ya Migori. Tumekua na mazungumizo nae hivi asugui. Na nataka niseme ya kwamba tuna kila sababu. Huu mkutano umekuwa mrefu sana kwa sababu kinachozungumzwa hapa tunazungumzia maisha. Na kila mtu alikuwa anaweza kuchangia. Na nataka nishukuru sana kwa sababu raisi wetu sauti yake iko juu sana na inatoka kwa machungu sana katika kupigana na maswala ya ukeketai. Na sisi tuko hapa. Alivyo sema hakuna mjadala wa kuzungumza mahali popote kuhusu maswala ya ukeketai. Hivyo ni kusema mimi kama waziri wa serikali na chini ya uongozi wake pamoja na serikali ikiongozwa hapa na county commissioner na hawa wote wana usalama katika migori na serikali ya county katika ushirikiano 
nataka niseme nataka nirudi hapa nikiwa na habari kamili kwamba migori hakuna tena ukeketaji sasa imeenda asilimia zero na nataka niwape onyo onyo lililo kali na lisilopendeza kwa mangariba wote wale kina mama wanaohusika na kukeketa wasichana nataka niwaambie na niwape onyo ole wenu ole wenu kitu ambacho ni cha muhimu sisi wetu tuzingatie ni kwamba serikali haina mchezo kauli mbiu ya rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya ni kwamba lazima ukeketaji ukomeshwe kwa hivyo ukipatikana ole wako na tutaweka na tutahakikisha tuko na structure mpaka chini mashinani wale mangariba wote ufanye kazi usiku ufanye kazi na niashimo ufanye kazi mchana ufanye kazi ngambo tunakwambia mkono wa sheria utapatana na wewe kwa hivyo mangariba ambao mko hapa na wale ambao wako nyumbani mkawambie serikali ni mpya mambo ni mapya na jambo la kwanza ukeketaji lazima ukome kwa hivyo mangariba mimi ni mrembo nimetembea dunia na sina hata kovu moja kwa sababu kila kiungo kilichowekwa katika mwili wangu kina maana yake na hakuna anayeweza kumkosoa Mungu kwa maumbile na mimi nataka niseme mila yoyote nchi yetu ya Kenya katika katiba tunaheshimu mila na desturi lakini mila ama practices zote ambazo zinaumiza mkenya zinaumiza taifa na hatuko tayari kuangalia wakenya wakiumia na taifa likiangamia badala ya kuweka pesa hospitali badala ya kununua fertilizer tunatoa pesa ku entertain kitu ambacho hakina faida kwa wanadamu wala hakina faida katika serikali yetu kwa hivyo hao wasichana wameongea na muwe mmeongea wazee wameongea wakasema wao wanapinga vikali maneno ya ukeketaji mimi narudi Nairobi lakini structure nzima ya serikali iko hapa migori kwa hivyo kama mmemaanisha mimi nimesema asante kama hamkumaanisha serikali itapambana na nyinyi na itabidi usalimu amri tumeelewana eh najua ni uchungu lakini ni uchungu kwa wale mnaowafanyia ni kuwapokonya haki zao za kibinadamu kwa hiyo kina mama kila karne ina mambo yake alivyofanya mamangu hawezi kuniambia nifanye mimi leo dunia imebadilika kwa hivyo lazima tubadilike na wakati na mimi mwenyewe nitahakikisha wale wa mama watakao tekeleza vitendo hivyo nimekuwa mhusika wa kusimama kutini kama waziri kwa jinsia Nasikia kuna ngoma zinachezwa baada ya wasichana kukeketwa. Watakao cheza ngoma mkiwaona kwa sababu tuko katika dunia ya kidijitali. Tunataka wapigwe picha video na zitumwe. Na kwa na watatoka ofisini kuja kushika wanaosherekea wasichana wa kikeketwa.